you're at 109 right now. All right, I'm back in Los Angeles after a trip through Central America as well as the Caribbean. First, I went to Puerto Rico, and then from Puerto Rico, I flew to Ecuador with a layover in Colombia. And then I went to Panama and then Costa Rica. And from Costa Rica, I flew back to Los Angeles. Let's talk about it, shall we? You're at? You're at 109 right now. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is part of the United States. That part was interesting because Walgreens, Walmart, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, a lot of those American brands that you're familiar with and I'm familiar with, I saw them there in Puerto Rico. And uh, the connection I have to Puerto Rico, my aunt is Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican say. And uh, our family, extended family is from Ponce. And yes, I went to Ponce beautiful um, central part, the city center with the uh, bomberos, the fire department, the historic fire department uh, display. Oh, that was beautiful. And then that whole center, um, man, city center was amazing. I knew driving in there, or rather before we arrived, my cousin and I were in uh, Puerto Rico. Before we arrived, um, I had good ideals, good thoughts, good impressions of Ponce, um, given that I was told, basically, get out of San Juan, Puerto Rico, because for one, San Juan can get expensive really quickly, and I was just told it's better to find deals outside of San Juan, and so we drove outside of the city, And Ponce was one of our destinations. And when we happened upon the city center, oh, it was magnificent. I was like, wow, this is really attractive, really beautiful. It wasn't as congested as San Juan. There was a lot of traffic in San Juan, a lot of cars and bumper to bumper. And it was like, see, we we rented a car, but we did not rent the car when we stayed in San Juan. Okay, let me let me explain that. We got the car. Okay, we were in San Juan for maybe three days. And on the third day, we rented the car. But we did San, San Juan on foot and by bus, city bus. So we didn't mess around with the traffic in San Juan with the parking situation. And I'm glad that we did that because when we were walking around old San Juan, we found that there were traffic jams and people you know just a lot of problems we were we were able to get around all of those problems because we were on foot so i think we did a great job and then we made our way to from san juan we went to aguadilla of course i had learned about aguadilla and crash boat beach and we went there but crash boat beach was kind of a It was a letdown because there were so many people there. I mean, granted, you could see a lot of, um, you know, sweet cheeks of, uh, (laughs) you know, thong wearing uh, ladies, young and old, running around the beach. And he's like, ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. You know, a little eye candy here and there. But for the most part, it was like, nah, this is not the vacation we're looking for. And so we stayed there for 30, 40 minutes or so. And then we moved to another beach and we found seclusion, which was nice. And then we made our way to Ponce, right? But we were, we had the car at that point. We had already done San Juan and we were moving around the island. So Ponce was really nice. And because I have a connection through my aunt, that's beautiful. So Puerto Rico, we did it. My cousin and I, my cousin Carlos, who whose middle name is Valdez. So his first and middle name, Carlos Valdez, are very Spanish. And so when we were traveling through Puerto Rico together, 
people were asking about him saying you know or they were i mean they people felt very comfortable with him carlos you know carlos they thought he was the spanish speaker not knowing that i am i'm larry <laughs> i'm the spanish speaker you know between the two of us for the most part so we um spent about six days six or seven days together in puerto rico we rented a car we drove through the uh, whole island the biggest hic hiccup the biggest hiccup was i bought a ticket to el junque the national forest and um the ticket was only for the visitor center at the park and so i was pissed because i thought that would I thought the ticket gave us access to the park. I thought we had to make a reservation and buy a ticket to enter the park and pretty much have it to ourselves. Walk trails, hike, go hiking, whatever. No, that wasn't the case. If you wanted to go to the visitor center, that was the ticket that I purchased. And I had no right to go any further than the visitor center. And I was pissed when we discovered that. I was like, no, but I made the reservation. I... I waited for the time block and I, I did this and I did that. They're like, yeah, but the ticket you purchase only gives you access to this. I'm like, who would wait, wait to purchase a ticket? Who would spend that much time trying to navigate, to maneuver in order to get tickets to a doggone visitor center? That's like, <laughs> that's like going to an amusement park and discovering that you only had access to the parking lot <laughs> that you only purchased the parking ticket at the amusement park like yo i want to get in the amusement park they're like sorry sir there's another ticket for that that you did not purchase like what that's what that's like so outside of that um we had a great time the videos for puerto rico um are on youtube posted those videos and it's it's great so now i've been to puerto rico um i could say more and i'll say more at at a, at a later date and, and time um but yeah puerto rico we did it my cousin carlos and i so so after that it was time for me to leave now here's what i have to say about leaving puerto rico I flew Avianca Airlines from Puerto Rico to Ecuador with a layover in Colombia. The first hiccup along the way was I was carrying two backpacks. Two backpacks. One like school size, regular school book, book bag size. And then another one that was maybe twice the size. It was more of a hiker's uh, backpack, you know. It was longer. I'm sure you can you can imagine what that looks like. And the attendant, the flight uh, clerk, told me that I had to pay in order to carry those bags on board. And so that was the first hiccup. I had to pay eighty dollars, eighty U.S. dollars, to bring those uh, those bags uh, onto the plane. Um, luckily. She told me that I could fly with them or I could bring them onto the plane, literally bring them on the plane for, I think she said, uh, $80 to bring them on the plane, to carry them onto the plane with me. And it, it would cost me $85 in order to put them or put one of the bags under the plane, which is kind of interesting, um, the, the price difference. I thought it would be more to bring it onto the plane, but no. So anyhow, I paid, I paid the cost and uh, I brought my bags on board, which I was very happy to do. However, I had the layover in Colombia, which meant that, well, I didn't know what it meant when I uh, booked, when I purchased the $80 ticket. I thought I could carry my bags onto the plane all the way from Puerto Rico to Ecuador. But in Colombia, they gave me grief and they said, you have to hand over your bag so we can put it under the plane. I think it's because I was one of the last people to board the plane. And so by that time, there was no more space. 
So they were saying, give us your bag. But I was like, but I paid in Puerto Rico to keep my bags on me. And now you're telling me I have to hand over the bags. Now, the, the other complication was I was carrying electronics. I had a, a laptop. I had cell, I had a, 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 an additional cell phone. So I had two cell phones. I had a laptop. I had a drone. I had GoPros. I had two GoPros with all of the accessories. I was, I had a lot of stuff. So when they told me I had to hand over a backpack, I made certain that all of my electronics were in one backpack. And that was the backpack that I carried onto the plane. Like, man, I I was really looking at the Colombians like they were very suspicious to have chosen this black man to, you know, tell him, hey, put your bag under the plane. And if I had electronics in that plane, I was like, oh, I'm about to kiss these the electronics goodbye. They just got me at the airport in Port in uh, Colombia. I would. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, man, this is a scam flying through Colombia, man this this sucks but i had all my electronics on the bag that i carried onto the plane so the bag that i gave them was full of clothes toiletries and such nothing very um expensive or you know valuable so they took that and that was the end of that so i wasn't able to carry my bags on the plane all the way to ecuador but it didn't matter. I put it under the plane. I got my bag back in Ecuador with no problems. I had everything. I had no issues whatsoever. The Colombians didn't rip me off. I had all my electronics. I got to Ecuador safely. It was beautiful. Now, when I got to Ecuador, I already had a ride, you know, ride for me. Uh, the hotel where I stayed, they offer um, transportation uh, for a fee, but you know, they know how to get their, their, their customers in and out. So they're like, you need a ride from the airport to the hotel. So we'll, um, we'll make arrangements for you to arrive. That was beautiful. As soon as I got, as soon as I arrived, I walked out after grabbing my bag and there was a gentleman there with a name tag, Larry Wiggs. That's me saying, come on. Jumped in the car. 30 minutes later, we arrived at the hotel and then the Ecuadorian adventure began or rather it continued. So this is, where are you? You're at 109 right now. 109. Check this out. I get to the hotel in Ecuador now i arrived around one in the morning or so so we got to the hotel around two in the morning everyone's asleep the staff is there because they expected me to be there so they're like all right we'll we'll help you with your bags we'll show you to your room there you go but i'm like hey i need to see the wi-fi i need to make sure that i'm connected to wi-fi once i look for the wi-fi signal at the hotel i discover that the wi-fi signal includes or it includes the numbers 109 you're at 109 right now it includes it now specifically i i'm not i'm not saying that the number for the wi-fi signal was like 43710986 no what i'm saying is the the hotel where i stayed it's called the friends hotel the name of the wi-fi is friends hotel 109 you're at 109 right now i'm like what their their wi-fi signal has 109 in the name that's like that time when i was in bahrain and i went to some random uh hotel room i walked into the hotel and there was you're at 109 right now 109 109 that number was on the satellite dish of the TV, the TV satellite dish. The TV was not on. The satellite dish was on and it was set to frequency 109. And I'm like, what frequency is that? Like, why are those numbers there? What's going on? So there I was in Ecuador experiencing the same thing. Like what? Their Wi-Fi signal is 109? 
It's Friends Hotel 109? What? It was too late to get an answer as to why, but the next day I went and I asked the receptionist. I said, what? Like, why is it, why is it called 109? Because years ago, around 2019, when I found 109 World, this was the name of a, a 501c3 um, corporation, a not-for-profit corporation. The name of it was 109 World. It's now defunct. You can't really find, um, you can maybe find remnants of it online, but you can't find a lot. And um, I messaged them one time through email and I said, what does, why did you choose 109 World as the name of your company? I'm intrigued because I have this particular relationship with these numbers and I want to know why, like what relationship you have with these numbers. So they told me, they were like, well, 109 is related to the Mala Beads. That's where I got all that information from. And they said the Mala beads have 108 beads that are used for prayer. But then there's the 109th bead, which is called the Guru bead. And it is used for, it's like a placeholder. And it's kind of like, it tells you when to stop, you know, praying or what have you. But it's also, the characteristics of this bead is, you know, are related to a teacher are related to enlightenment and, and other things. And so, so they named their com- their company after the 109th, um, 109th bead, the Guru bead. But they, all of this information was new to me and they were explaining to me something about, um, basically they were telling me about 108 and saying that their 108 is a very, is a highly spiritual number and that this 109 number is, is just next to 108, but it's the number of the teacher. And so, Anyway, how I was very fascinated. So when I got to Ecuador and I found 109 again, I was like, tell me more. So the receptionist explained to me that basically the Wi-Fi signal was coming out of room 109. (laughs) And so they named it, you know, Friends Hotel 109 for the Wi-Fi signal. That was the easiest explanation. There was nothing more. It wasn't any deeper than that. There was nothing more to it. So I wasn't let down. I wasn't disappointed. I was just like, oh, okay. Well, I got the answer that I I looked for. I got the answer that I wanted. I just, uh, you know, I I was just uh, uh, vexed by seeing, by the sight of this 109 again in Ecuador now. But I have to say that Ecuador, even before arriving in Ecuador, because I knew, well, I knew little about Ecuador, but I, I had a suspicion that Ecuador had something special in store for me. Ecuador is a country that I had never been to. I had no connection to, except for, except for, I have another aunt who was from Ecuador. She's from the city of Esmeraldas. Esmeraldas. I'm not sure. Anyhow, um... I didn't go to that city, didn't visit her hometown, but because I was going to this new location, I wondered, I imagined maybe 109 has something in store for me. And sure enough, it did. And it wasn't this Wi-Fi signal that was called Friends Hotel 109. No. After I spoke with the receptionist that day, Um, and I asked her about, you know, why the Wi-Fi, you know, was, was called, uh, 109. She, well, excuse me. I left after asking her that I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go and shoot a a YouTube video. I'm going to leave now. Okay. See you later. She said, okay, have a nice day. And I walk outside the door of the hotel. I turn left and I walk a short distance to the end of the block, a very short distance. I turn the corner to the left and I discover that there's a, a little, in Spanish, in Espanol, rincón or esquina. It's a corner. There's a little, there are a little, a uh, few steps, little steps where I decided if I uh, set up my camera, I could just sit on those steps and just enjoy the day and just, you know, talk my ish just around the corner from the hotel. And 
as soon as I went out there, as soon as I hit that corner, as soon as I set up the camera, I set the camera up and I started rolling. I, I, I clicked film. I started, I pressed record and that was the best decision I had made because within a minute, within less than two minutes of having sat down, of having clicked record on the GoPro, bus, bus 109 drove by. You're at 109 right now. And that is clearly visible in the shot clearly visible now when the bus passed me number one i did not know the bus route so i wasn't expecting this bus to pass by number two i was not aware of the bus passing when it actually passed i was turning to my left and my right just to get a sense of you know who or what was around me I knew the bus was passing me but I wasn't so keen on focusing on which number bus it was so by the time the bus passed me less than a minute later when I looked up the block while I'm recording mind you all of this was being recorded so there's video proof of all that that occurred while I'm recording, a minute after the bus passed, I could see the bus up the block from me, and that's when I could see, clearly see the numbers one, zero, and nine at the rear of the bus on the, the back window or, or so displayed, right? That's when it hit me like, oh my gosh, that bus just passed me. That bus is number- You're at 109 right now. 109. And I'm like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? I, I just walked outside of the hotel. I just hit this corner. I just set the camera up. And this is how Ecuador greets me. The bus 109 passes by me. I'm like, this is unbelievable synchronicity. This is unbelievable, you know, serendipity. This is what a coincidence that actually happened. Now, after that, I continued to film just for a few more minutes and then I, I packed it up. I turned everything off because that was the biggest coincidence I could have ever imagined. I went back to the to the hotel, talked to the receptionist to explain to her, oh my gosh, I just set up the camera. I was just filming and bus 109 passed by. And then she was like, huh, what? You were asking me about Wi-Fi and this number 109 and, and you told me that 109 has some significance for you and then you go outside and you film a video whereby bus 109 passes you while you're filming? She's like, yo, that's weird, right? That's strange. But that's exactly what happened. And so I... Throughout my, my time in Ecuador, I returned to that corner, that, that rincon, esquina. I, I returned there and I filmed uh, in hopes of maybe seeing bus 109 pass by again. And bus 109 never passed. I could never capture it again on video. It was uh, an aberration. That It was an aberration that I was there as that bus was there. Not that the bus passed that way. I'm sure that that was the bus's route, but I was oblivious to this, this fact. But when I went back out, out there to that corner, I never saw the bus pass by again. And I tell you, I was sitting out there for quite a long time and that bus never passed. And I just thought, man, that's pretty weird. Now that I'm ready to receive this bus, to see the bus, to, to capture it again on film, it doesn't appear, but when I, but when I'm least expecting it, there it is. Like, wow, that's magical. That's unbelievable. Where are you? You're at 109 right now. So I did happen to see bus 109 again while I was in Ecuador. And it was on the last day, hours before my flight, I'm walking around the city and I'm, I'm, I'm on my way to the market to get some, you know, uh, delicious eats, you know, um, when I see 
bus 109 all the way down the street. I could clearly see those those numbers in the back window indicating which bus it, it was, 109. And I filmed it. I said, wow, there it is again. So basically, I saw 109 when I entered Ecuador and then only again as I was leaving because that I saw it again only on the day hours before my departure. So I thought, wow, Ecuador is saying hello and goodbye to me. Like, wow, that was fascinating for me. Really fascinating. So that's what happened in Ecuador. And I definitely had an inclination like, man, something, something interesting is going to happen in Ecuador. And sure enough, it did. Thereafter, I flew to Panama. I had a wonderful time in Panama, but I didn't have any particular moments that, that really stood out that said, hey, 109, pay attention. I actually made that comment. I did tell my, my cousin. My cousin lives in, Bo in Bocas del Toro. I told my cousin about 109, and although I didn't have any moments that really stood out to me, there was this one point where we were embarking on a journey by boat, and I checked the, the, the clock. I checked my watch on my iPhone, and I said, oh, look, we're boarding the bus. We're getting, excuse me, not the bus, but the boat. We're getting on the butt, on the boat at 10.09 a.m. And I thought, well, that's not exactly 109, so I'll just leave it at that. But later when I told my cousin, you know, nothing really happened related to 109 while I was in Panama, my cousin was keenly aware of my story. She remembered my story and she said, but don't you remember when we boarded the, the boat? You said it was 10.09 a.m. And I thought to myself, wow, you're right. There's no reason for me to discount that experience. That was another 109 experience or encounter. So I included it. And then finally, I flew to Costa Rica. There's nothing that really jumps out in my mind about Costa Rica and 109 from Panama. So, um, yeah, can't say that there was anything that jumps out of my mind, but those are the 109 experiences that I had recently through my travels of Central America and the Caribbean, right? Puerto Rico is a Caribbean, you know, nation that is actually a part of the United States. So anyway, that's the end of the uh, story there. Um, yeah. So 109, <laughs> 109 on my, oh, my travels. When I was in Puerto Rico, I was driving on the highway. I think I was returning the, what the heck was that? Returning the, uh, the rental car. And I saw a service truck with the numbers 109 on it. All of these instances I have on video footage. So they're available on the website. I see 109. Let's end it here, y'all. Peace. You're at 109 right now.